I am with Bill Butler, the current owner of the Venice Marina, and a gentleman who has lived here just about his whole life. Right, Bill? You've been here just about your whole life? Yeah, I grew up in a little, uh, on a little island called Cox Bay, just uh, about, right across from Fort Southwood. And then I was about 10, I moved back to uh, on the West Bank, and we got a telephone. <laughs> well, I know you spend a lot of your time on the water and fishing, right? Yeah, we, it's, uh, you know, growing up as we did, many nights I did my schoolwork under a flare uh, until the speckle trout started biting. So, yeah, I've done my share of fishing. That's great. I mean, I don't blame you. It's so beautiful here. You mentioned, though, you've had to withstand other oil spills in your lifetime. You've seen this community in this area really be able to bounce back. Yeah, and it's, it's you know, over the years, you see a lot less of it. You know, as growing up as a, in, you know, today's technology, growing up as a kid on, on an island right in the middle of the oil field, there was 13 families lived on this one island. We had to cross the river back and forth to go to school, and the only way you could get to us by, was by boat, you know, and you thought you lived on this little island nobody come see and you know come summertime and come vacations we was you know it was we was the hotel wow. uh, everybody came you know and uh, but dealing with the oil spills those guys back in those days opened up the wells to the atmosphere to buck the flow line pressure as the well died uh, wouldn't buck the, the flow line to bring it to the tanks they would open the well to the atmosphere to raise the pressure of the, of the tubing up and once it reached that pressure they shoot down the flow line and the rest of that all was on in the water so, uh, I mean, that's how they did it. You ask really anybody that grew up in those days in all passion what they did, and, and they tell you the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but as technology got better, you got a lot less of it. And we always caught fish, you know, even weeks after that. Um, you know, if, if, if oil and that was to kill the environment, then where I grew up as a kid is thriving today. The, the marsh is sinking, but where most of the oil was, it's still, it's just pristine. It, uh, if we go, New Orleans goes. Cut right. and dry, simple. Right. Well, it sounds like this is a great time to educate everyone, not just on the disaster and environmental impact of an oil spill, but also just on erosion and, and a kind of abusing the area, if you will. It's a great time for everyone to get themselves educated. What would you suggest for our viewers to do to get involved and want to help out right now? Take us, come down, come fishing. You know, we're still open. Um, come down and eat the seafood baked potato, seafood gumbo, and uh, listen to a little southern hospitality we have. Yeah, here he comes! <laughs> come on down. I would absolutely suggest that. Come on down, volunteer, help out, charter a boat. It's still a ton of fun, it's still a ton of beauty, and you'll really get educated on some of the most beautiful natural resources and estuaries I've ever seen. Oh.